Welcome hey. back. How's it going? We are the Transport Bandits and I'm Cheryl. I'm Mr. Dimples. And we are headed back to Goshen after two weeks of home, of some rest and relaxation, getting a little work done, getting a little riding done on those bikes. Yeah, we got to ride a little bit. Of course, I put four new tires on the truck. Mm -hmm. Tell, changed, what did you do all to the truck I while changed, we were home? I changed the fuel filters, I put new tires on, I changed the oil, and um, washed the engine, checked all the fluids, and um, lubricated all the, all the um, points. That so I we got lubricate. our truck fully serviced, basically. Yep. And I had to fill out the, uh, ma the quarterly maintenance report to turn into Synergy. Um, our company requires us every quarter for every three or four months to um, turn in the maintenance report yep. of everything that you have done to your truck maintenance wise in the last three months uh, they require you to fill out a form listing how the odometer reading and uh, yeah, the they just, you know they just want to make sure you're keeping taking, up your truck taking care of your equipment yeah so um, Gus is all good to and raring to go for another big long haul uh, believe me I'm taking care of this equipment I love this truck and that's I'm hoping to get several hundred thousand miles out of it yeah that'd be good right. yeah now what about the tires did we did we um uh, we continued with the same type of tires yeah, right we did because we already had a set and what type of tires are those because everybody Michel wants to know Michelin cross climate Agilis and those have been great tires for they us. are great tires I feel like I could have got a few more miles out of them than I did well, how but many miles did we get on it? We, we only we got forty-five thousand miles. Yeah, that's not too good for tires. No, but I could have got another ten thousand out of them. But, but we're coming up here to haul in the winter. We'll probably be going west, where there's a lot of snow and ice. And I would rather have good tires on the truck. Yeah, and that that so with the. The, see, the thing is, is that we may have a little more wear and tear on our tires than some other transporters who are getting more wear and tear on their tires and theirs can go longer because we have gone on some out west and into Canada roads and whatnot that are really rough on the tires and they the tread was getting really down there, right? Yeah, or maybe another brand tire would get better wear. Yeah. You know, but the Michelins, they hold up good against debris in the road and they're a comfortable ride you know it's a smooth ride they go really well on the ice and snow so in the winter i prefer to run them this spring i may try something different i don't know all righty good job and you did replace the fuel filters yep and we have fuel filters that we carry with us all the time uh, in case we have to do that while we're out on the road. Yeah, I replaced the fuel filters and I got a new set with me. Now, um, we are headed back up to Goshen. Um, like I said, we've been home for a couple of weeks after that Texas run, if you watched the last video. And um, we are, we do not have a load as of yet. No. Why don't we have a load? We're headed back to Goshen, we don't have a load. We're going to dance, service center. We're going to try to figure out how to get some more fuel in this truck. Can you believe the price of fuel? Um, it's it's like averaging like between three fifty four dollars a gallon. Three fifty to four dollars you know, a gallon. Those prices, and that's here in the in the Midwest or and and East. I yeah, mean, you get that, out west, it's like four no over four dollars a gallon. Yeah, at those prices, I want to be able to buy wow. as much as I can. So, whatever fuel I can fit in this truck. That's what I want to do because, you know, when it's that cheap, you want to buy as much of it as you can. <laughs> when it's that cheap? <laughs> no, we need to get it where we can get it at the cheapest price before we get into the areas where it's like four and four fifty a gallon, and and uh, we just need to have as much fuel as we yeah. can hold in the bed of our truck. My goal would be two hundred and fifty gallons in the truck so we already have a 118 gallon auxiliary tank and 50 gallons in the truck 50 gallon factory mm -hmm. tank yeah so we've got 168 gallons right now now Gus is an, a Ford F350 long bed yeah. we have the 118 gallon auxiliary tank and a toolbox 
uh, near the uh, the rear hatch yeah. there, and the Reese fifth wheel um, hitch right. in the bed of the truck. Yes. Now, the reason we have got, we have an appointment, we kind of have an appointment with Dan's, because Dan's service center is very busy, and we love Dan's, and we're going to Dan's because what do we want to do at Dan's? We want to get a bug shield, because you know, the bugs were crazy. There's three reasons I'm going there, and one secondary reason. The three reasons I'm going there is, number one, I'm going to get a bug shield. I'm going to get the hot wire upgrade to the seven-way pin. Now you're getting the um, seven-way upgrade. What yeah, is that? Yeah, well, it's the... actually just a power wire upgrade uh -huh. that replaces the charging and power to the pin. Uh huh. That way, it's not going through your fuses and all that stuff. And and that will help us like not blow fuses and that's whatnot. Right. And where will they install that? Will they run that across the the like the top of the truck? I don't think they'll run it. No, the not like the inside. Truck. Where do they run that? I think it will run. From the battery to the upfitter switch. Upfitter switch. Yep. And then from there to the rear. See those little toggle switches right here? Alright. So um Yeah, that way when I plug the camper in to come in here and turn the switch on, boom, I got power to my camper. Alright. Good job. Okay, so um that will be an an improvement for our Big maintenance of our of our truck, so we won't ever have a problem with the uh, fuses. fuses. And then what's the third thing that you're going to look for Dan to do? As Because he has us wrote down for an appointment, although he's very busy. Yeah. We don't know if he can fit us in or not. But he's going to try to fit us but in. He's going to try and fit us in. We are prepared to stay a couple of extra days. That's why we didn't get a load, because our truck yep. may be in Dan's for a couple of days while he does this. Okay, so what was the uh, what's the third thing that you want to try and get done at Dan's while we you're there? We want to replace the ball valve on our fuel tank. It's the valve that does the gravity feed. Because last winter, when we were up in Minnesota and it was 17 below zero, it froze and messed up the valve. Yeah, but now ours is a, a um, like the toggle switch controlled um, auxiliary it, tank, right? We have two methods of delivering fuel into the truck from our auxiliary tank. Right. One is a little ball valve in the bottom that, that you can turn and it will just drain in there. Right, but that's the backup method. Yes. The way we use it now is that you just flip the auxiliary here, one. Flip the toggle switch on. Yeah. Boom, it's pumping fuel. Yep. Turn it off, it's not pumping fuel. Okay, so that's how we've been doing it. But the, And then the gravity fed line is the backup system in case we have a fuse blown, right? Or something. Or Pump something. Something happens, okay. So you're going to get the ball uh, valve. Replaced. replaced on the gravity fed portion of our auxiliary tank yeah. and hopefully add some more auxiliary tanks somewhere we're going to see if dan has anything or can do anything that we can add even more auxiliary tanks to the back yeah, so of our long bed which i believe that you can get the auxiliary tanks that go over the wheel wells i don't know how that works we're going to talk to dan about it Right now we've got the 118 gallon tank. Um, you know, I'm trying to get 200 out of it. So and maybe he could put, take that 118 out and put like two 90 gallon tanks in there. You know? Oh, okay. Something and like that. And not add the over the wheel well? Well, maybe he can add the over the wheel wells. I don't know. Well, also, I have heard that, uh, that our factory tank is a 50 gallon factory tank. Right. I have heard from other transporters that Ford, for this particular model, we can upgrade the, our factory tank from a 50 gallon tank up to a 78 gallon tank? 67. Are you, is that what it is? 67? But I don't know if that's worth it or not. And I don't think I'm going to go that route. Okay. If I had a 30 gallon tank, yeah, it'd be worth it. But we've already got a, a 50. 50 gallon tank, yeah, okay. And that tank. That replacement factory tank is very expensive. It's like two thousand dollars, and that's Ooh. just not hardly worth it for. Ooh, that that's hurts. just not worth it for seventeen gallons. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that's not worth it. But if they could upgrade it to like a ninety-gallon factory tank, that'd be worth it. But they that'd can't be worth do it. that. All right. 
So that's what we're doing. Uh, sorry for the rambling on, but letting you know that we are headed back to Goshen. Uh, we're going to stay at the uh, Amish Walmart. Uh, in the back of the truck tonight yep. and hopefully we're going to meet up with some of our transport bandit fans uh, I think we'll meet up with Len, Len Daniels and, yep. and uh, you know. he started off like we gave him a consult uh, to for RV yep, transport months ago, months ago. and, and now been, he's doing it and he was on his first him, load yeah, we've been talking to him periodically mm -hmm, we talked to him on the phone you know if yep. you guys are thinking about starting into RV transport you have questions Yep. or Just you have anything at all message us message and then us. Um, i'll give you my phone number mm -hmm. you can give us a call and boom we'll talk it over we'll talk it over we'll tell you whatever you might need to know as far as we know it um like i said we're not any experts or anything but right. we'll tell you our experience for it i have to tell you though what talking about those fuel tanks was very interesting to me so i think when i get done at dan's tomorrow morning and I find out all the ins and outs of what we can and can't do. Uh -huh. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. Yay. Fuel tank talk. I love it when you speak those sweet nothings to me. I know you do, baby. <laughs> okay, so we will catch you on the flip side. We're going to go meet up with some of our Transport Bandit fans. Um, I will uh, meet up with Len. And we're going to eat a, a bite. And yep. uh, we'll catch you at Walmart. Amish Walmart right here in Goshen and uh, the stables for the Amish buggies are right there but we are here we met up with Lynn there's Lynn and Edwin who um, is over there and uh, we're waiting on Kevin McPherson to show up so we're having a good time Lynn has his mascot Mr. Grimm and uh, so Mr. Bones and Mr. Grimm has been Hey, look at look who's sitting in the truck with Jeff. It's What's Chris up? James Chris right James. there in the house with us and Mr. Bones on the dash there. And we're here with Ed. And we are just having a blast here in the Walmart parking lot and just pulled up. We've got uh, Kevin McPherson. He's here now. Let's go say hi. Look who it is! Kevin McPherson is here! Yay! Oh, there goes my hat! We knocked my hat off! <laughs> hey, we're here with Danielle and Tucker! Look, there he is, right there! This is Kevin McPherson's hat, obviously. <laughs> and Tucker. Alright, so we're all here together. We're here with Miranda, another Transport Bandit fan in the house, right here. And we are all gathered around here at the Amish Walmart, having a good time. This is the place to be. They've got a sweet boy. What a sweet boy. Uh, yep. We're, we don't know we're how trying to we're figure out some more fuel because as um, inexpensive as diesel is, I want to be able to buy as much of it as we can right yep. now, right? Yep. I agree. Yep. Chris and, uh, agrees. Chris, what, what are you, you're here getting a weight distribution kit bracket and we don't know how long we'll be here today so we don't know if we're picking up a load today or if we're, we're getting a loaner vehicle, right? What, do you, what are we getting done? Well, right now I'm getting a power wire upgrade on the seven-way harness. I'm getting the lock cut off of my head because it's frozen. It's on frozen on there. And we're getting um, a ball valve. For oh yeah, a new ball valve for the gravity feed on okay. my tank and a bug shield. So we're going to get that done first, and then we're going to see if Ryan can hook us up with more fuel capacity. More fuel. More fuel. More fuel. 
All right, so we're going to hang out here at Dan's, or we're getting a loaner vehicle, I think. So maybe go around from an elk cart here. And uh, then hopefully we'll be out this afternoon, but we may have to stay overnight anyway. So we'll either get a load this evening or tomorrow, hopefully. All right, check back in with you later. Bye. Bye. This is Dan's service center. This is where we always come to. They treat us right. They would treat you right. Anything that you need for all your transport, they've got right here. You come in, this is high and right away. And uh, see all the great stuff that they have available here. This is what you get want. The auxiliary fuel tank. They are fantastic. That's what the first thing that you're gonna probably want to add your truck is an auxiliary fuel tank. Right now we're running a, a reef fish wheel hitch, but, um, and uh, we've got a regular ball hitch right now, but these Gen Y hitches, that's the bomb. That's the ones that you really want. And this is the secret walk area. All the cool, neat stuff. So we're gonna let him do his magic here, and we're gonna get a learner car. So we'll have the learner car, because we don't know how long this is gonna take. And uh, turn around the cart a little bit, see what happens with when we can get a load in. Okay, we're going to grab some breakfast at the Bristol Street Cafe. Okay, what'd you get there, Jeff? I got the breakfast skillet. Breakfast skillet with gravy on the side. And Chris has got the biscuits and gravy and bacon. And I got the French toast. This is a pretty awesome place to come and eat some breakfast. Here in Elkhart, Indiana. What's my new portion? Bristol Street Cafe in Elkhart, Indiana. Okay, so while we are waiting at Dan's, we've got the loner, Bronco here, and uh, Jeff is trying to find a barber shop so he can get trimmed up. And um, he's gonna not be able to find a barber shop because it is barber shop closed Monday. But uh, he's gonna go to a girly salon. Um, Jeff may be a while. Waxing services available. I'll have a completely bare. And we have kidnapped. We have kidnapped Chris. He's with us today. He's at Bending Monday with the bandit. Oh, here he is. Well, did you come out with more circus coupons? Up for the three free tickets to the circus. Well, how are you not waxed? One o'clock. One o'clock, okay. All right, the circus doesn't start until October 20th. Right, right, We are in the truck. Jeff has an appointment for one o'clock. To be waxed. <laughs> there it is. He's clean. Clean? Up here, anyway. A little rough here. Puppy. All right, let's continue our day. And see Elkhart. what our adventure brings. I'm gonna go look at CDs with Chris. Okay, we're gonna stop here in Gallup. See if they have a handheld CB radio that I can. Use. I think we found two of our handheld CBs here at Gallup's. We're gonna go with the handheld Cobra so that we can. Um, be more in tune with the other truckers and when we do a run like when we do a run with Chris here we are going to be able to communicate because he has an actual CB and this will be something we were thinking about getting anyway for when I'm in a motorized unit Jeff will be in the tow away and then Chris will be in front of us so we'll be able to communicate a lot better okay so we kidnapped Chris today all right we're not getting the extra fuel tanks in the truck because they would have to be modified and so we are going to be ready to roll this evening. We're going to go do our PTI on our units and pick those up and be ready to roll first thing in the morning. It is 4 a.m. We're going to go because that Chicago traffic is ridiculous. So we're going to try and beat the Chicago traffic 
and uh, Chris's imprisonment by the bandits today hasn't been too shabby, it looks like, <laughs> here at Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> All right, so let's go get those units. We're back outside Dan's. We spent the day with Chris, and uh, Truck's done. we did not get the extra fuel tanks that we wanted. Because it was moochy dollar. Too much for what? Way I, too much. What? Way too much for what little bit of fuel I would get. So I'm going to investigate some different possibilities. And what did we? What did Dan do for us today? We did the power wire upgrade to the 710. Right. We did a new fuel filter on the external tank that I've got. And we did the valve. Uh, the valve. A new valve and a flow shield. And the most important thing we did is we did the hot wire upgrade to our 7 Also, we got the uh, hitch pin, the new hitch pin that will unlock with our key to our truck. And these giant D-rings, because sometimes the chains for the campers um, have a really tight fit over this right here. So we got the big giant D-rings. We'll be able to put the chains to the camper units right there. And that way we can take on and off that hitch more easily because our last one was just like, I don't know what it was, glued on, bolted on, frozen on, whatever you say, we could never get it off. So that, uh, that's a great little uh, hitch lock pin that will unlock with our truck key. And uh, that's all we got done today. And so we are going to wrap up today and we have got something crazy coming up on the next video. Chris, Mr. Dimples, Tennessee, we're all going to run to... And Mr. Bones. Mr. Bones is coming along with us and right. Chinchilla Mike. And we're going to run all the way across America to British Columbia together. And then he's delivering all the way over in Vancouver Island. We're delivering in Chilliwack. You remember that name and from the Cheryl's last video. Cheryl's delivering in Bismarck, North Dakota. I'm taking a motor home to Bismarck. Um, that should pay for most of our fuel, and that will be on the next video coming up, For but for our maintenance and repair and our kidnapping day of Chris for today, that's going to wrap us up. See you on the next one. All right. Good job, guys. We'll see you on the next video. Transport Bandits, out. out.